we back, and obviously we're not talking about anything other than Pat Mahoney's or should I say Pat Mahoney's big dog, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. This is kind of a, a historical day, honestly. I can't remember anybody getting a 10-year baseball-like contract, 10 years, 477 in guarantees, 503 we've read with, with different incentives, depending on you know if he's, if he's a Super Bowl champ, an MVP. It's just, it's just quite the deal here, Mike. I just want to clarify, I know his name is not Pat Mahoney's or Pat Mahoney's. It's Pat Mahomes. I just want to clarify because I know people on this channel – like to uh, criticize how we say last name. So just want to get that out real early. So hope you at least make it this far in the video. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate your clarification. But no, so in terms of clarification, I don't think there's any needed on the fact that Pat Mahomes was going to get paid, right? You know, you can just look at what this man's done in, in two years since becoming the Chiefs starter. In 2018, we're talking uh, all-time season, you know, 50 touchdowns, 12 INTs, over 5K yards, Pro Bowl or first team All-Pro, NFL MVP. The only thing he didn't do was bring a Super Bowl. Right. So how does he build on that? 2019 comes. He, he plays just as good, just in, in some fewer games. And, you know, again, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl champion. And and we are where we are. You know, he's kind of the consensus number one QB. So, Mike, obviously, we all knew he was going to get paid. What are your thoughts on the initial amount that you're that you're hearing? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Like I, the amount just kept going up like every it felt like half hours, like 400. Then we went up to like 450. Then we're like 477. And like right now, I think they're saying 503. And now, not all of that's guaranteed and guarantees, and obviously the actual contract language is going to play big into how this contract actually works. But it, not a head scratcher because, man, he seems to be worth it. Like, obviously, they have talent around him, and they're going to have to start cutting back on that talent when you sign a guy uh, to the size of this contract. But if, if you watch the games, you do know Pat Mahomes is the reason the Chiefs are where they're at. Uh, he really does carry that team. He does so much. Uh not only is he a game manager, but he, he's also that – it's kind of like a weird mix of game manager to like just willing to obviously just throw the ball downfield to see what happens, kind of like gunslinger. I don't think – it's. I guess we've seen quarterbacks like it. I don't think to this level and extent. Maybe that's just the modern NFL that we're in. Maybe that plays part in it. But uh, he really – like if you had a comp for him, like it's a better Brett Favre. It's a smarter Brett Favre. That's like – that's the closest thing I could come up with. It really is. Um, so I, I think – just at surface level, man, I don't you, – you need to keep this man on your team and, and long-term. He is your future. Uh, it's the most important position. He's the best at it. You got to pay the man. No, for me, it's, it's interesting because I don't necessarily have a problem with making Pat Mahomes the number one paid QB in the league, right? Obviously, I do have some questions because he's never shown us that he can necessarily elevate a bad roster. And, you know, whereas like a Russell Wilson, for example, he certainly has. But I can't penalize him for the team he's on, right? We know – we know, as you said, what he shows us week to week, he's great. I have no problem paying him as QB1. But where I have a problem with this deal is, you know, what are the what are the next contracts going to look like at that QB position? Is is Mahomes going to be the bar or is he going to be the precedent? And now now the Dak Prescotts, you know, Lamar Jacksons, and heck, even, you know, going into the future, Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, are those guys all going to be stacking on this $40 million plus plus deal? And that's, to me, where things get a little bit hairy because, sure, Mahomes might be good enough to, to elevate – a, a lesser roster, which we haven't seen, but he might just be considering what we have seen. I don't know if all those other guys are. And if we're going to start paying QBs that much money, that scares me off the top. Absolutely. I guess with, with this 10 years, you're really banking on this cap going up and, and eventually this becoming the norm. If anything, he's going to be a value at the, at that price point for a quarterback. Uh, and I think that's what, when you put a contract as long as it is, uh, that's going to be huge. A lot of with this with this contract, it's going to be, is this contract front-loaded, back-loaded? How are we going to put talent around him? Uh, you're really hoping, that obviously, that, as I mentioned before, that the obviously salary cap goes up so you can afford to kind of keep players and this becomes the norm. But um, it, it, there's so much that plays into this contract for it to really be worth it. And it's just interesting because we have not seen a football contract for 10 years. You're basically locking this guy for the prime of his career uh, before he's even off his rookie contract, which is crazy to, to see. Uh, and we were talking earlier about those guarantee mechanisms that they're saying built into this contract where you have to promise a year in advance for, for the salary. Uh, it'd just be interesting how this plays out. Obviously, do I think Pat Mahomes is going to be a bust? No. Is he going to be able to play at this level for the next 12 years? He very well could. Uh, it, just coming off his first two years really as a full-year starter, uh, he looks like he even has, you know, I hate to say it, goat potential. Um, like it's, it's hard to deny that. So 
I see where they're coming from. I think there's just so much that, that has to play out. And it's hard. I, I guess you can't predict the next 12 years of this man's contract, the salary cap, and, and what talent's going to be available where. Can they get some on, on some pretty good deals? Uh, you really can't. No, and that's that's exactly kind of what I was saying. I think that he could have GOAT potential. That's why I have no problem with it for him. But I don't think that anyone's going to say Dak Prescott has GOAT potential or Lamar Jackson or those other guys. So, again, like if this is the bar, if no quarterback surpasses this deal in the next 10 to 12 years, which, you know, I, I don't think is going to happen. It's As we saw a couple years ago, once a quarterback hits 30, then everybody starts coming in above it. And now I wouldn't be shocked if Pat Mahomes, he's in the 40s, everybody starts going in above it. But at some point, you kind of have to step back and say, whoa, these guys are not good enough to elevate, elevate poor rosters around them, you know. And that's one thing that I kind of want to get into next because we've seen this team win the Super Bowl. You know, they have, they have a Super Bowl winning formula that just worked last year. And if you look at their salary cap breakdown, they were paying the quarterback position $9 million as a whole, 4% of their salary cap. Well, going forward, it's going to be – it's going to be – around 20%, obviously, 20% plus, depending on those guarantees. So, Mike, how do you think that, that not only the Chiefs, but any team in general, how do you think that they'll be able to build a team around a quarterback when they're eating up essentially one-fifth of the salary cap on their own? Yeah, it's hard. It's where you, you're going to have to sacrifice somewhere. It's just basically inevitable. Uh, they have free agents coming up. Um, just even signing players in free agency, they won't have that availability or that option because they won't have the salary cap. Uh, it seems like they're pretty hard capped with the way these guarantees are, are looking. It looks like a lot of it will be guaranteed and count against the actual salary uh, when it comes into that season, whatever, out of the next 10 years um, of this deal. So I, th I think obviously they're going to have to make some sacrifices. I, on what side of the ball would I make them? I'm not sure. I feel like if you're going to pay Mahomes this amount of cash, I think the sacrifices have to come on the offensive side of the ball. I think you, you can't neglect defense to the point where even Pat Mahomes at his best cannot make up the game or, or, or kind of control the clock like he was, like he was the last two seasons. Uh, you have to put some money on that defense. Um, but like a player like Chris Jones, are they really going to be able to sign him to a long-term deal after this? I can't imagine so. Uh, so you're giving up a player like that now for Mahomes. Previously you had both. You were able to keep both on the, at the salaries. Uh, and they're both on their rookie contract, so under a reasonable rate. Now they are both, uh, with Chris Jones being, you know, franchise tagged and Mahomes. I don't know if any of this deal will come out this year, but the way Chris Jones will be on this team two years after Mahomes is off the rookie contract out of this 10-year extension. So can the Chiefs sustain the Super Bowl winning formula without players like Chris Jones on defense, without players like Tyron Matthew on defense, without maybe weapons like Kelsey and Tyreek Hill on, on that offense? I think it, it questionable. I think it's questionable. Could they? Yes. Do what? Can I see it for the future? I'm not sure. Not at a consistent rate. Not at a dynasty rate. Like maybe a team like the Patriots were able to do with Tom Brady taking a pay cut at his position to get him more talent around him. That's not what this is. Mahomes is going to have to carry the team uh, at, at a consistent rate for the next what twelve years. No, and, you know, for people who, you know, they're just looking at this as, oh, that's a spreadsheet. I, you know, Sport Track, they had a really nice diagram of, you know, putting it in circles so you can see, like, their, their uh, individual spending by position, you know, position by position. This is what they're at right now pre-extension. And as you see, everybody's pretty balanced. Obviously, you, you're making some concessions at cornerback, obviously, without Brashad Breland. But other than that, you pretty much have playmakers at every level, which, you know, we talked about in our team recap video. This is, this is how the team won right? You know, you have weapons on offense. You have Tyreek, you have Travis, you have decent running backs. You have some great tackles and Eric Fisher, Mitchell Schwartz. You have those D linemen, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, Tyron Matthew on the back end. It's just a very balanced team. Well, you know, I kind of want to pull some other teams for comparison that we've seen pay their quarterbacks and you're going to see how barren their rosters have got after these Super Bowl wins. So like, here's one, Seattle. Look at just now how massive that quarterback, that quarterback size is. And this is Russell Wilson, who Again, everybody says he doesn't have much help. Well, no offense to Russell, it's kind of his fault, you know, because back when they won, back when they won the Super Bowl and were constantly getting there, uh, when he was on his rookie deal, they they had the Legion of Boom, they had a, a decent offensive line, they had good edge rushers. They and now they just don't have any of that. And and as you see, that's why Russell is running for his life on a game in game out basis. You have no protection on the offensive line outside Dwayne Brown. You have you're making massive concessions at both at both secondary and your pass rush. And we always say the best way to improve a bad secondary is with a pass rush. They have neither. 
right? And, and this is what happens when you put so much capital in that QB position. And this is, this is Russell Wilson only making $31 million on this. Wait, wait when it's Mahomes making 47, for example. You know, and, you know, this is only a graph of their starters. So obviously the percentages are not like for the whole team. But when Russell Wilson is making 22% of what your entire starting lineup is, that's, that's tough when you're trying to field 22 guys. And another even, even more recent example is the Rams. I mean, I mean, just look at that. Like we saw the Rams in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. What do they do? They paid Jared Goff massive amounts of money, over 20% of their, of their cap amongst starters. And, you know, look at the defense now. Where's Dante Fowler? Where's Joyner? Where's, where's Corey Littleton? Where's Roger Saffold? Where are all these guys that brought them to the Super Bowl? Where's Ndamukong Soup? These guys, Akib Tlaib, these guys might not have been the biggest difference makers, but now that defense is barren. You don't have Brandon Cooks or Todd Gurley anymore on the offense either. Like, you're just, you're just stripping away. And what do we realize that, oh, hey, guess what? When Jared Goff doesn't have as many, as many talented players around him, he's not able to carry a team. And to this point, we've only seen Pat Mahomes play good in a good situation. How is he going to play when the situation starts to look barren like this? I don't think we have the answer. And that's why I don't necessarily love, I don't necessarily love the massive contract, even though I get it for him. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, for sure. I'm totally with you there. Uh, I think the one way maybe you could make up for it is, you know, rookie contracts, uh, drafting well. Uh, the problem is, are you going to need a third-round pick to step in as a starter day one? If so, that's a problem. Uh, and, and it could be a problem that they see uh, in, in the foreseeing future. Um, you could see third-round picks having to start day one because they don't have a, the salary cap to either keep the veteran that they had on the team or sign a new, another one off free agency. Um, so I think they're going to have holes. This team, if you look to a full-on roster, kind of like we've been doing the team recaps, if, you know, we keep doing them the next 12 years. I, I got to imagine we're going to see quite a bit of holes that we really kind of scratch our head on. So is Mahomes going to be able to make up the difference to make up for that those holes? It's a good question. Um, I, we really can't tell yet. It's too early. It's, a, and it's, a, it's crazy to think that Pat Mahomes just got this contract, and we've really only seen two, him as a starter for two years. He's really only played two years. And obviously he's played at an above elite level um, for those two years. Super Bowl, obviously MVP uh, caliber play, but – can he carry a team when he is going to have rookies starting on that offensive line? He's going to have rookie weapons. He's going to have a defense that can't hold an offense to save their life. Uh, it's, he's going to have to try. You know, and what I think is really interesting about the Chiefs is they have kind of seen this coming, obviously. We've seen them draft guys like Martinez Rankin in, in, in the third round, for example, left tackle, who might be the successor to Eric Fisher. We've seen them draft now Lucas Niang out of TCU, right tackle, who might be the successor to Mitchell Schwartz. We've seen Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, who's probably going to replace Damian Williams after this year. But at what point are all those losses going to catch up to you? And that's what, that's what you kind of see here when you look at the grand picture of it. These are all guys that the Chiefs are going to lose or potentially lose as unrestricted free agents in the next two years. Guys who I think we can all say made a pretty big difference in their Super Bowl run, obviously, from, from left to right. Sammy Watkins, Eric Fisher, Travis Kelsey, Tyron Matthew, uh, Mitchell Schwartz, Chris Jones, and Laurent duvernay Tardy. That's, that's a, a, massive, a massive amount of talent that you're potentially letting go just because you're investing so heavily in that QB position. And, you know, you mentioned Tom Brady earlier taking pay cuts. Well, Tom Brady is, in many, in many people's eyes, the GOAT. Well, even Tom Brady had the self-awareness to, to realize that, hey, I didn't do this on my own. And that's what kind of worries me about Pat Mahomes and anybody who eclipses that 40 million mark in the future is, are they, are they kind of thinking too much of themselves and thinking that football is a one, a one-on-one -on -one game when it's really not, it is 11 on 11 for a reason. And you know, if they, if the chiefs start losing all these guys, for example, I don't even know if they're going to be a top three to five team anymore. And that's crazy because they do have a top one quarterback as of right now, you know? Yeah. I think they're always in the playoff conversation, kind of like, uh, the Seahawks, like you you showed before, they're always in the conversation. They're always in the playoff chase. But, man, you don't I, – I don't think I'd ever go out of just even looking at the playoff team and be like, well, you know what? The Seahawks are going to make this Super Bowl. I usually don't think they have a chance. I usually think that they're probably on the lower end of a play of the playoffs. And I think that's where maybe the – I'm not saying that's where they're going to end up necessarily. I still think they have a couple good years that they could still be – super make those Super Bowl runs and hopefully maybe they could, you know – kind of do it in spurts it might be a more spurt kind of making the runs not just consistent dynasty maybe you know a couple years two years maybe they're just kind of revamping with some draft capital and some talent and then kind of actually compete two years compete two years compete um but i see a lot like the seahawks like really man just talent across the board on that team is not where 
it should be. Not where that when they made it to the Super Bowl, uh, and, and could they could they change that? I, maybe I don't know how you could fit contracts and players in the salary cap situation that they just put themselves in, but. I'd see it probably working similar to the Seahawks more than I would, you know, kind of being a perennial Patriot dynasty. No, and that's the problem because the Seahawks, for example, even when they do trade capital for Jadavion Clowney, they're not able to keep him. Or the Rams, for example, we see them, they just keep on mortgaging future first round picks. Well, that catches up to you eventually. And, you know, what are the Chiefs going to have to do in, in two to three years here when, when this really goes south in my eyes? Because the problem is, is that, yeah, these next two years, they'll, they'll probably be solid, right? But then, once you once you really get deep into it, and you know now we're really talking forty seven million. We're not talking the, the fourth and fifth year of his rookie deal anymore. Then then what are they going to do? How are they going to replace that talent at such a fast level? And like you said, when you have rookies starting starting at a bunch of spots, how is that going to work? And you know we haven't seen a dynasty built like that at all. And that's what worries me because the winning formula that we've seen in the NFL ever really since Russell Wilson is have a quarterback on their rookie deal. You know, because you're, you're able to get a quarterback for $5 million or less, let's say, and then take the other $200 million of cap space and, and put a bunch of talent around him. And if the quarterback's here, the roster's going to be here, and he, they're going to pull him up. Well, the Chiefs, they just won with that formula, and now, now they're trashing it and saying, no, we're going to go the route that, that the Vikings did with Kirk Cousins or the, or the Steelers with Big Ben or the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. And how many of those teams have had continued success? None of them. We've seen the teams that have had rookie quarterbacks and we've seen the teams that have had QBs taking pay cuts win. And that's what scares me about this deal because, you know, at some point, is it just going to be Pat Mahomes running for his life like Russell Wilson is and has been in Seattle, you know? And for him, for his sake, I hope not. But at the same time, it's almost, it's almost his fault, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. And I want to mention something else. Uh, other teams in their division. Uh, at, we were talking about the Broncos Chargers. If you watch their team recap videos, we were talking about how they're not, maybe not there yet, but they're going to be there in a couple of years. And if, the quarterbacks Herbert and Locke and kind of hit the, you know, hit the mark and actually be productive NFL quarterbacks above average NFL starters. They are going to be a more talented roster. They probably are already a more talented roster. If you disclude the quarterback position. So give that two to three years, uh, let those young players develop. They're going to might have to sign some off the rookie contract, but nothing like a 40, you know, 40, 40 to $50 million a year uh, like Mahomes. Uh, you can keep a Derwin James and a Desmond King for and still have money to spare than just what you signed for for Mahomes. So it's kind of if you look like that, man. Just in the division itself, man, it's going to be more competitive these upcoming years. And uh, you just basically hard kept yourself, and you can't keep the talent like the other teams in your division. No, I agree. That, that's a really good point. And you know, one thing that is is kind of in my eyes is when everybody's zigging, maybe it's time for you to zag. And you know, maybe those Chargers or Broncos. Perhaps Drew Locke or Herbert are not going to be $40 million dollar guys, but they're going to want to be paid like it. Well, maybe they'll just move on from those guys and, and continue to try and find QBs in the draft, keep, keep that super talented secondary, for example, in L.A., or that super talented uh, weapons core with Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant together in Denver. You know, it's, it's teams like that that I think are going to become the next dynasties in the NFL because at this point there's been, there's been no proof that paying your quarterback this amount of money is how you get it done. And that's why, that's why even though Pat Mahomes might be worth it and it might work for them, I'm really scared what's going to happen to the next teams that start getting in that same range. Yeah, no, absolutely. For other teams, it definitely is not going to work. For the Chiefs, though, I'd like to at least mention it could work. I think Mahomes, I don't think we've seen a talent quite like him. So it could work. They could be consistent. They could be a dynasty. Um, would I take – the over on them uh, at Mahomes, you know, matching Brady's Super Bowl rings? No, I don't think I would. Not with this contract. Uh, if he would have somehow, if he would have settled somewhere on the thirty, thirty-five million dollar ring, save them about you know ten, fifteen million dollars a year to to maybe re-sign a player like Kelsey and re-sign some of these offensive linemen. Uh, then I think we're looking at a whole different picture, just because one other player might make that whole difference, or maybe to sign maybe two players that are really like strong starting caliber players and maybe not, you know, all pro potential, but, but really solid foundational pieces. We might be looking at this totally different, but with, again, so much of your cap going to just the quarterback position, it's hard to say. And, and hopefully maybe, you know, as the years come by and the salary cap gets inflated, maybe it'll look, it'll, it'll make more sense. And maybe it'll be right in line with what quarterbacks are getting paid at that point. Um, it could be right at line what quarterbacks are going to get paid in the near future, um, but, which is the problem you, you've been mentioning, uh, and it really hurt some of those teams. 
if the Cowboys pay Dak Prescott this, uh, I, they're not going to be able to keep the talent that they currently have on that roster. And the talent on that roster is what makes Dak Prescott look like he's somehow deserving of a $40 million contract. I, I, I kind of say that your performance is indicative of an interaction between your talent and the talent around you, your situation. And, you know, it, maybe if you're the GOAT, let's say, let's say Pat Mahomes could be the GOAT. Maybe he's able to, to sustain that, that high performance despite the low talent around him after a deal like this. But there's so many guys who won't be able to. And that's why I just think that, that you know, if you're a team looking into doing this, give, give it a couple of years, man. Let, let this play out. Let this – let this happen, you know, over two, three, four years and see how, how the Chiefs roster is able to sustain, if they are able to sustain, because I don't think they will, you know. So before you make anything rash on, on Dak Prescott and make him a 10-year, 10, a 10 $40 million guy, wait wait until Travis Kelsey's not there and see how good Pat Mahomes is then. Or wait till Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher aren't there and see how good Pat Mahomes is then, you know. And, and then you'll really realize, okay, maybe we should or shouldn't pay Dak Prescott. Instead, we should put a rookie behind Tyrone Smith, Zach Martin, put a rookie with C.D. Lamb and Mari Cooper, you know? And I know a lot of teams might not have that much time to wait, but, but man, I feel like that's probably the smarter move in this case than, than just rushing to, to do something that's going to really handicap your franchise going forward. Yeah, and I, I'm going to mention something kind of interesting to you. I don't know if it'll turn it into a question or just kind of a thought. Two former MVP quarterbacks. One somehow just signed with a team on the vet minimum. One just got signed to a 10-year, right around $500 million contract extension. Where is the disconnect there that somehow a former MVP is signed on the vet minimum and the other one is $500 million? And maybe, and maybe it's more indicative of the Patriots that the dynasty is going to live, that they make smart decisions like that. But it's, it's just the NFL, the, the front office is just irrational. And that's, that's what it sure does seem like. Well, where is the $46 million difference? Cause man, I sure don't see it. No, I, I really don't either. And that's, and that's the thing. You could even question it looking at a couple of these quarterbacks in the 30 to $20 million range, but now that range just got even wider here in the last couple of weeks. You know, I think that people just have such an overinflated value on this QB position. They do think that the game is just a, a one-man show when, you know, maybe it is on your fantasy team or, you know, maybe it is on your video games, but in reality, it's just not. And, you know, it, it, it's sad to see. And that's why I do think you're going to see a team like the Patriots who, their, their positional spending percentage, like they're spending very little on that QB spot, and they have been because of Tom Brady's willingness to, pay, to take pay cuts and, and Cam's reduced salary, whereas that's why they're able to win as these other teams are able to maybe have one year, one year here, one year there, but then they, they kind of flame out over, over time. So I just think it's that, over, that kind of over-reliance on one player when, when you, really, you really need to spread the wealth. Yeah, no doubt. I think just looking stat-wise, like I, get, I can't imagine the stats between – you know, some of these 20, maybe even $30 million quarterbacks and, and what Pat Mahomes is producing. Like, what does the stat look like from, you know, maybe just a player like, I try to bring up maybe like a player like Matt Stafford or, or Cam Newton when he was, you know, still productive, maybe not right after the MVP season. Uh, like, is it really that big a drop off? What are you getting? Maybe 600, 700 yards, six less interceptions and 10, 10 more touchdowns. I think maybe that's, worth you know 20 million dollars a year it sure just doesn't seem like it when you just put it on paper and stats no and I mean you can even look at Russell Wilson who's going to be the second highest paid at 35 million that's a huge gap there that's a pro bowl caliber defensive lineman or cornerback there at 12 million dollars difference that's insane you know and I think that part of it goes to almost the over-reliance on analytics and I've been seeing this a lot lately where people are talking about like oh Pat Mahomes EPA and you know and for viewers who aren't familiar that means expected points added where it, it tries to take into consideration, you know, what the down and distance is and the result of the play. Well, here's the thing. Like, somebody's EPA for a, a one-yard screen pass that Tyreek Hill takes 99 yards and, and somebody's EPA for throwing a streak 99 yards through the air, they come up to the same result, right? So we're looking at this as if the, the situation doesn't matter because we're just basing it off the results, you know? So sure, Pat Mahomes, he's all the EPA leader in the NFL these last couple of years. Well, again, you have to factor in the situation. And can you quantify that? Maybe not. But, you know, I, I think you're going to see it with your eyes visually over the next few years, years here. And, you know, with that being said, if with your eyes you're enjoying watching these mic'd up videos, now that now I think we're done with this and we've been rambling on this for enough, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment, you know, tell me, do, do you agree with us? Do you think that the Chiefs are essentially handicapping the rest of their roster? And, you know, best case scenario, he needs to be the bar for other QBs to go under. Or do you think we're going to see the Dax, Omar's make way more money and, and really just – 
kind of flip the league on its head here as, as QBs are going to be getting 25% of the salary cap. You know, it's a really interesting discussion we had, but ultimately, unless you comment, one that we can't have. And, you know, if you do want to keep watching our videos, make sure you subscribe. We're doing a, a top 100 series right now. I'm, I guarantee you that a couple of these Chiefs right here, they're going to be getting videos in the future. Pat Mahomes will as well. So make sure you be on the lookout for those. And I, I think that's all we got today, right, Mike? Yeah, I think we mic'd up and we mic'd out. Those Peace, guys.